here today we're talking about the uh, version 7 importer with our brand new 2021 r2 release and if you go to our website just jump on winnow1.com go to the support tab and knowledge base you can just type in v7 importer and you'll see there's a winnow1 2021 version 7 importer right here so i made this article and uh, this is really all you should ever need. Um, it's not going to cover every error that might be out there, right? There's going to be plenty of circumstances that uh, your your environment might have something that's totally different, and uh, you can run into some issues there. But um, basically, we're just going to go through the KB article, and I'll show you how it's actually done on my virtual machine. Um, so the entire Win911 version 7 configuration is held within two files, and that's the win911.ini and then your config file. Uh, which that's named by the user, so I can't tell you what your name is going to be, but it's whatever you guys named it in your version 7 environment. And this will tell you the default path here for the INI file, NC Program File Spectre Instruments, down through Windows 1 v7. I'll show you a screenshot of that. And then default directory for the MDB file is the same folder structure, but in the config files. Um, you can save these you know, to, you can save the config file to a different location. So it, yours might not be here. Um, so I go through that in this next paragraph, uh, how to find yours if it's not in the configuration default directory. Um, the win.1.ini always has to be here. So that, that has to be in the win.1 version 7 folder. Uh, but if you don't know where your config file is for some reason, uh, it's in the top left corner of the configurator. That's your the name of your file. And then if you just do a file, save as, it, it'll bring up the default directory and you should be able to see where you have yours saved. So basically we just need to make a copy of those two files. That's all we need for the entire version 7 configuration. So grab that INI file, grab your MDB config file, and uh, just make a copy of those, throw them on your desktop, on an external hard drive, whatever you want to do um, to get them to where you've installed the 2021 R2 machine. And then you just launch the version 7 importer, and it's right there in the uh, Win911 folder. So, you know, click your start Windows button, go to the Win911 stuff. And again, this is, you know, 2021 has to be installed. So this is assuming you've already done that. Uh, one of the included utilities, version 7 importer, and it'll walk you through, hey, you need your INI file, you need your MDB file, <clears throat> browse for those. It'll give you a quick uh, overview of what's what it's found to import and that's a successful import. And if there's any errors, it'll kind of give you some good info as to you know what went wrong. So you can see here I've posted an issue where voice connection, it says error creating voice connection um, for this object. Authorization code must be unique. So I, I, what I did here was I did the import again and uh, those those already existed so it wasn't a unique authorization code uh, just to give you an example of the the error logging here so that's the kb article all right so we're gonna close that but that's always going to be there for you guys to reference and then we'll, we'll actually do it right here on my virtual machine so again win 1 2021 needs to be installed right so i'll open up the workspace here for our new products and show you kind of what I already have in here and what the uh, the importer is going to add. So uh, here in the workspace, you can see the roles by default when you when you have a fresh install, it's just going to have managers and operators. Um, I have somebody created in the in the directory here, I have myself, but you shouldn't have anything created. You should use your V7 importer first to bring in everything. Um, so roles, there's two of them, right? Schedules, you have some default schedules in here uh, and I'll explain why I'm showing you this because when you do the version 7 importer it's going to add a schedule that comes with the uh, the version 7 config so there's already an always never daytime weekends um, stuff like that in here but you're going to get a new one notification policies so again you shouldn't have anything configured in here I do but I'm going to show you that you know it's going to add another one in here from your groups from version 7 um, alarm sources, you can see I do not have an OPC DA source. This is empty, but I do have one of my version 7. And then gateways, I only have uh, the new mobile. I don't have an email, voice, or anything else like that in here. So I'll close this out and I'll show you how to do this real quick. So again, the default directory, wherever you have your version 7 running, C program files x86 into the Spectre Instruments folder into v7 and your win91.ini file is right here at this home directory so you can just make a copy of that 
and if, if, if you're doing it on the same machine you don't have to move them at all um, but if you're if you're doing a version 7 on one machine and you installed 2021 r2 on a different machine you know just make sure that you grab these files and, uh, and move them over there so there's the INI, and then in configuration files, here's all the included ones. You just want to find where you saved yours, and I'm just going to copy mine, throw it on the desktop for an example. So I have my MDB, my INI. That is the entire version 7 configuration. So we're going to click on the start button here, and you can just go down to Win911, and you'll see the version 7 importer. It tells you that you need to get your INI file and your MDB file. And here's the default directories where they are. Again, if you're moving this to a different machine, just use these ellipsis browse buttons. And uh, we'll use the desktop, for example, that I just moved the INI file there. So we'll just point that to the desktop, config file, same thing, just for an example of moving this on a different machine. So now I'm pointing at those two files wherever I saved them. Click next. It's gonna show you a, a quick overview of what it's ready to import. So what it found in your config files, it got a label, role, schedule, contact, a couple connections for that contact, an email gateway, uh, notification policy. So this notification policy comes from the group back in V7. And then the OPCDA alarm source and an item. Just click the next. and import completed successfully. So ideally, that's what you'll see. Um, there is this checkbox down here to view the log file. If you have an error, if it failed, if you run into some issues, uh, go ahead and just view that log file and it should tell you, you know, where it failed at the end here. Uh, as you can see, this just it's completed successfully. Everything that it found and everything that it generated and uh, import saved without errors in this case. So just to show you what it looks like when there's a problem, I'm just going to do it again. Uh, and the reason that's going to create a problem is that the importer is going to find the things that I just imported and it's going to try to import them again and they already exist. So pointing at the same files, I'll just go back and do the desktop versions for uh, consistency here. and it found all of the same information. Click next, and this should give us an error. There we go. So issue with the voice connections. What happened? Authorization code must be unique, right? I already imported it. It's trying to do the, the copy of the same thing. Can't do that, so it errors out. Call out list, name must be unique. It already has one that exists with the same name. My OPCDA source, name must be unique. All right, so this is just uh, an example of some good error tracking of what went wrong. And you can go ahead and view that log file by checking the box. And it's going to give you that uh, in-depth issue, the same thing it just showed you in the in the GUI. But uh, authorization code must be unique, name must be unique, etc. So that's helpful. If you run into an issue, it should show you. Um, one other thing that you might run into is an error where it says that the dispatcher module cannot be found. Um, now that one's kind of hard to make it happen for you guys to see it right now, but. Uh, Basically, what that means is that the identity section is um, is being this V7 importer is being run as an account that is not the Win911 account. So you can think of it like that. So if you open your services, whatever you installed Win911 as, you can see I have my local admin account called Jeremiah. Everything is running as this. You want to log in as this machine to do anything with Win911, especially the version 7 importer. Um, and this is specifically for the security that's turned on by default. Okay, so I'm just letting you guys know if you run into an error during the version 7 import uh, and it says that the dispatcher module could not be found, but your services are clearly here, they're clearly running, you see the dispatcher is running, just do one of two things. Make sure that you log in as the same account that you use to install it, or you can try to come over here and type in security configuration. And this is our new security configuration utility. Uh, you can specify the account that it's going to run as, and you can turn security on and off. This just kind of does some encryption for our inter-module communication. So everything that is Win911 talking to other Win911 modules is all secure. So turn this off and do it again. Um, if you already tried the logging in as the correct account and run it, turning security off should totally fix that problem for you.
Um, but that's it. So then we'll jump back into the workspace and uh, show you that, I mean, not everything is going to translate perfectly, right? Um, in the directory here, so Jeremiah was the, uh, the contact that I already had, and then Maya was one that was imported. So you can see that Jeremiah has this always schedule that was pre-built, pre-built with 2021. And you can see there's a different schedule called always 24 hours all week, version seven import utility. So this came from the import utility, right? So when you see that difference, it's not a big deal. You can just go delete that schedule and have them all and always, but just to let you know, that's why it's gonna look a little different. It's gonna have these name colon zero for the first contact, colon one, colon two. So this is just how V7 had to separate them. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. And again, use that KB article. Uh, if you have any other issues, go ahead and open a ticket with us and have a great rest of your day.